So I'm here to talk about deploy and the deploy suite in, in Drupal 8. Um, so a lot of people may be familiar with deploy in Drupal 7. Um, it's completely been rewritten for Drupal 8 and I'm going to go through a lot of the, the ways in which it's different and how you don't actually need deploy module anymore to use deploy. Um, so for those that don't know, I'm Tim Millwood. Um, I've been using Drupal for quite a long time and I currently work for Amnovation um, where I'm working on this kind of stuff pretty much full time for one of our clients. So deploy is now a suite of modules and we've built up this diagram to show deploy at the top, the one with the arrow, and all the different dependencies underneath that can be used or don't have to be used and, um, and how they all sort of fit together. Um, so first of all, I'm going to run through every module that you could possibly need to, to do the deploy suite. And then it's up to you how you use them. And if you're not just a site builder, if you're a developer as well, you might want to build your own module that hooks into some of these and build your own way of deploying, um, build your own UI and, and make it work how you want it to work. So it's, it's now a very flexible platform. So let's start with multi-version. Multi-version is the, the base module that you need to get all this working. So the main thing that multi-version does is, is put revisions everywhere. So every content type, every content entity in Drupal 8 will now be revisionable because of multi-version. And we also override a lot of other things um, in, in the, the entity types. Um, to make them sort of work better with the, the with the deploy suite. We add a soft delete, so when you delete something, it doesn't actually disappear, it still gets deleted. And the main reason, it, the main reason for doing this is that um, when you replicate content between your sites, we can replicate del deletions as well. Um, so delete something on dev, deploy it to live, and it gets deleted on live as well. Um, and it just gets marked as deleted and, and we've got the trash module which I'll go into later where you can restore things. We have a whole bunch of indexes in multi-version as well um, which allow us to keep track of entities a lot better than core does and we also keep track of the sequence of um, changes that are made on entities so every edit no matter what entity it's done we keep the sequence index of what is changed and what entity was changed um, and when it was changed and all this kind of information so that a bit like a, a git log we can tell exactly what's gone on and when we replicate we can look at that, that sequence. Uh, revision parents is another interesting one in that we know where a revision came from and you can potentially have um, a revision with two child revisions and if they stem from the same parent then they're conflicting revisions. So if two people uh, edit a entity that will create two revisions with the same parent and therefore a conflicting revision and then we can work out what to do with that later on. Um, and then from that we can create a child from two parents so if we do a merge of some sort to resolve the conflict we can create a child revision um, and this saves us a lot of problems because we know exactly where a revision came from. So replication, that's another module that we need. Um, so there's a number of ways that we do replication. Um, so the replication module holds all of the kind of services and, and information that's needed to do it. So we normalize all of the entities, so in replication module there's a normalizer so we can convert all content entities, whether they're nodes, blocks, taxonomy terms, whatever, into a standard format. And we can also handle dependencies, so if there's any entity references that are made, then we use UUIDs so we know exactly sort of what the, the entity it is referencing. So when you replicate to another site, it may not have the same node ID the same block ID, but the UUID is always the same. Um, we also do this for non-Drupal platforms to understand what we're doing. Um, and I'll come into this a bit later on, but you can replicate your content from your Drupal site to somewhere else that's not Drupal. 
um, for example, CouchDB or PouchDB, which is a, a JavaScript uh, application. We've got a lot of factories that um, give us a lot of information when doing replication. Um, so here's four of the main ones. Bolt docs will allow us to save and retrieve multiple entities. Um, changes is a, a pretty cool one where we can see what has changed on a site. So as I was mentioning earlier about this sequence index that we have, so we can see what has changed between sequence A and sequence B. And we can see what has changed between different sites. Um, all docs allow us to retrieve all entities. No matter what entity type, we can get all of the entities and potentially replicate all of them. And then the revision diff will allow us to find out exactly which revisions have changed. So when we replicate content, we don't replicate the entity, we replicate the revisions. So we look at each revision and what has changed and, and replicate those. So now we've got the workspace module. And the workspace module sits on top of replication and allows you to create workspaces. So let's uh, take a look at what a workspace is. Um, here at the top, we've got a live workspace. So the live workspace is what all of your users would see. So they visit your site and they see all the content that belongs on the live workspace. And this works exactly how a Drupal 8 site works out of the box. You add content and it appears on your live site. But now with the workspace module, you can generate new workspaces. And here we've got a new product and an upcoming event workspace. And you'll see behind it is the live workspace. So it takes, you can take all of the content from the live workspace have it sitting behind in that workspace, and then you can add new content on top of it. And the, the, the plus and the arrow denotes how we can push and pull content between the live workspace and your new workspace. So we can do a pull, which will update from live. It will pull everything down from the live workspace into your new workspace. And we can do a push, changing all of the pushing all of the changes from your new workspace up to the live workspace. We've also got this last minute fix workspace, which is branched off upcoming event. And this allows us to push and pull to the upcoming event workspace specifically. And then it's up to the upcoming event workspace to push that up to live. So if you're familiar with Git, it works in very much the same way in that you can create branches and you have an upstream branch and you push to the upstream. So workspaces are actually defined by multi-version module. So when you install multi-version, you have workspaces there and then. But we don't add any of the UI until the workspace module because you can't actually really do anything with workspaces until you add the, the workspace module. So from here, you can create new workspaces. Um, you can edit existing workspaces. And you always define your upstream workspace. So this is the workspace that it would push and pull from. And this can be any workspace on your site, as, as shown in the diagram before. It could be the live workspace, or it could be another workspace on your site. So we've added uh, a few different ways to switch workspaces. So we've got toolbar add-on a block that you can place on your site, and then also an admin page where you can choose which is your active workspace. So this is not changing the live workspace, it's changing the workspace that you are viewing. And then you can update the workspace. So from the, the workspace module, we add a, a toolbar add-on that gives you the option to do a pull, uh, an update to, to your workspace. And no matter how your pushing changes, because there's a few different modules that allow you to push your changes up, um, the pull can always be done by this update button in the toolbar, um, so you can bring down the latest changes. So now to workbench moderation and content moderation. So workbench moderation is a, a contrib module in, in Drupal 8, and we have worked to port this to core, so in 8.2 there'll be content moderation. They're very similar modules that there are some big 
um, back end differences as well. So content moderation doesn't yet work with this suite, but it will hopefully in the next few weeks. Um, I'm not sure if we'll get that working by the uh, initial 8.2 release, um, but it should be in sort of 8.1 or 8.2.1. Um, but for now, workbench moderation works works perfectly, um, so you can get that running now. So, with workbench moderation, you moderate a workspace. So traditionally, in in Drupal 8 and Drupal 7, you would moderate your content, you moderate your nodes, you moderate your blocks. But now with workspace module, you'll moderate your workspace. So you moderate everything as a whole. Um, so you can use exactly the same permissions that Workbench Moderation already defines, and you can allow your content team to change the moderation state on a workspace. And then as soon as you publish a workspace, as soon as you set the moderation state to published, it fires an event in the back that pushes all the content up to its parent workspace, its upstream workspace. So whatever you defined in the workspace settings as the upstream, it will push up to there as soon as it gets published. So as I mentioned before, content moderation is in 8.2, um, and we are working to, to get workspace support on there. Um, so hopefully soon you'll be able to use content moderation or workbench moderation exactly the same way by moderating workspaces. So trash, um, I briefly mentioned earlier on that when you delete something, it doesn't actually get deleted anymore. Um, so we have two different versions of trash. Um, the 1.x branch works with multi-version. So multi-version um, allows things to be flagged as, as trashed and then it goes into your trash and you can restore it or you can purge it which will actually delete it. In the 2.x branch of trash this is the one we're looking to move into core so we're basing it on content moderation so in content moderation there is an archived moderation state and as soon as something is archived it will go into your trash and in exactly the same way you can restore it or purge it from there. So we're hoping in core 8.3 we'll be able to get trash into core and this will depend on, on content moderation and will allow you to trash your, your entities. So as I mentioned before, purging is, is a hard delete so this uses the exact same functionality that is in Drupal 8 core now and will hard delete all of your entities. And then restoring uh, works in different ways depending on the, the version of trash that you use. Um, in the 1.x branch, it will just um, remove the delete flag. And in the 2.x branch, we look back at previous revisions and restore the moderation state that it had before. So if it was previously published or if it was previously draft, we'd go back to that moderation state. So relaxed web services is a module that then can sit on all this to do um, multi-site replication, so replicating from one site to another. Previously with workspaces, it just uh, replicates between workspaces on a single site, but Relax will allow you to do multi-site replication. So it's based on the same protocol as CouchDB, so we looked at how CouchDB does replication. Because with CouchDB, you can replicate all of the content in the database from one database on one server to another database on another server, and this is all done over HTTP. So we looked at that API and we implemented it in Drupal. So Drupal exposes exactly the same endpoints as CouchDB does. So you can use CouchDB to replicate content between your Drupal sites. And you can also replicate content from Drupal to CouchDB. Or you can use any other CouchDB compatible uh, system such as PouchDB. So PouchDB is a uh, a JavaScript um, application, um, so you can run that and do uh, offline applications or uh, decoupled uh, Drupal sites. And it will replicate down to the JavaScript local storage and, and run a fully offline application. So, as I mentioned, um, offline and decoupled sites will use, use PouchDB. You can have a fully JavaScript front end. 
So then on to deploy. This is the sort of traditional module in Drupal 7 that sort of sparks all this. And Drupal uh, deploy is now really just a front end. Um, it's a way of replicating to your upstream workspace. So as I mentioned with Workbench moderation, it will replicate when you publish something. With deploy, it will replicate when you click the deploy button, just as it always has done in, in previous versions of deploy. You click deploy, you fill in a bit of information about your deployment, and it will deploy to the upstream workspace. So let's look at a couple of um, example use cases on, on how you can use some of these modules. So this is the simple content staging. Uh, we've just got multi-version, replication, workspace, and workbench moderation. And you enable moderation on your workspace. And then you can add content to your stage workspace and publish the workspace itself. And the content gets replicated directly up to the live workspace. You can also add relaxed module to this if you want to do exactly the same replication process, but to another site. Um, so adding relaxed, it works in exactly the same way. It just allows you to choose a different site as your upstream. So I've got a quick uh, demo video that will show the uh, workbench moderation um, option. So here, this is a perfectly clean site. All I've done is install the modules that I just mentioned. So I'm going into the workspace settings here, and then we've got workspace types, um, so like content types. And we manage the moderation of the workspace type and enable moderation there. So we can now moderate workspaces. So now let's go and add some new content. You'll see in the toolbar at the top, on the top right, we've got a stage icon. This shows us that we're currently on the stage workspace, so that's where we're adding the content on stage. So here we've got some test content. It's just a standard article, just as you get out of the box with, with Drupal 8. I haven't changed any settings or enabled moderation or anything. It's just a standard, uh, standard article. So we'll now switch to the live workspace and we've got no content. It's a blank Drupal site. And back on the stage workspace, we have the content. So now we go back to the workspace settings and we edit the stage workspace. It's currently draft, but we'll change it to published. So now we've updated the stage workspace to the published moderation state. And we're still on the stage workspace and we've got that test content, but going over to live, the test content is there as well. So it replicated the content as we, as we moved it over. So that's the simple content staging uh, workflow. Um, I've got a YouTube video in there, so when you um, look at these slides afterwards, you can view the video again. So now we've got a manual content staging um, workflow. And this is now using deploy instead of workbench moderation. So we've got multi-version, relaxed, workspace, and deploy. The process is a, a little more um, straightforward um, because we've now just got a, a deploy button in the toolbar um, that we're going to use. And again, you can use relaxed, which will add the API to do the multi-site replication. So let's uh, switch to another video. And and we can look at the deploy process. You'll now see in the top bar, we're on stage workspace, because it says stage, but we've now got a deploy button up there. Um, so that is what we'll use to do the deployment. So I don't need to enable moderation on the workspace. We haven't even got workbench moderation installed, so I can't enable moderation. I'm just gonna create an article on the stage workspace. So we're on stage, we hit deploy, we get this form up so we can describe a bit about the deployment. So we've got a sort of audit trail of the deployments that were done and successful deployment. The content is now on live. So it's a, a bit more of a straightforward process because we've just got that deploy button to deploy it. Um, but some people find the moderation states is a bit more sort of logical for, um, for the content editors. So here I've just made a, an edit on the live workspace. 
and we'll go back to the stage workspace and it still says on stage and I can click the update button that will do a pull down um, and we can refresh the page and we've got the edit on live change now so this update button works exactly the same whether you're using the workbench moderation approach or whether you're using the deploy approach um, the update just pulls everything down from the live workspace so now let's look at what we do if we add relaxed to all of this to do the multi-site replication so I'm not gonna bother going through the full demos because it's exactly the same UI to to demo how the replication actually works but to configure it and set it all up you will need a replicator um, so this is a, a PHP library that we've created um, it's exactly the same as the CouchDB replicator that you get with CouchDB, but we've rewritten it in PHP. So you don't need CouchDB to do any of the replication. Um, if you've installed the, the, the modules with Composer, it will pull down these dependencies anyway, but if not, run the Composer command and it will pull down the, the replicator and any dependencies that the replicator has got. So now once you've got um, relaxed module installed and you've got the replicator installed as well, you can go into the relaxed settings where we want you to define the uh, default replicator credentials. So you could just put in your admin account if you really want to, uh, but we advise setting up a special user who would you, you use for replication. Um, so this is the user that we will use to log in to your site when, when replicating the content. Um, we have got roles and permissions and everything in place to do this. So you can create a special user with a special replicator roles who's only got permissions to do replication. And they don't have permission to sort of do anything more than just, just replicate content. So then once you've added your default replicator user, we need to know about your remote sites, your other sites within your Drupal platform. Um, so we ask you to give it a label, the full URL for the site. Um, the URL will need to have the API root on the end of it, so it'll be sort of like um, drupal.dev slash relaxed. Um, you'll see on the previous slide we had the API root. The default one is relaxed, but you can call it whatever you like. Um, you can sort of brand it for your, your <laughs> client or your organization. You need to add the API root when you're adding the URL there. And then you add the username and password for your remote site. So on your remote site, you'll need a replicator user as well. Um, again, with the replicator role, replicator permissions, um, and you add their information in here. And then when you edit your workspace, you'll notice that there is now new target workspaces. So previously, um, if you edit your workspace, you just have the, the live and the stage workspace. These are workspaces that we add by default. It would also list there any workspaces that you've added. So in the previous diagram where I had a new product workspace and an upcoming event workspace, they would be listed there. When you add your remote that I showed on the previous screen, it automatically goes to that remote and finds out what workspaces are there. Um, it uses the same uh, information as CouchDB provides. So if your remote was a CouchDB database, it pulls in what databases are on CouchDB um, and it would show them here. So my remote site I just called Drupal and it's pulled in live and stage from my remote site. So I can choose Drupal Live as my remote. And then when I use the same processes that I showed in the video, um, it will just push to that upstream workspace, just push to the, li the, the Drupal Live, which is my remote site. So as I mentioned before, this is all based on CouchDB. Um, the relaxed web services module uses the same API as CouchDB uses, and even the workspace module, we use the same protocol as CouchDB provides, but just sort of behind the scenes, it, it doesn't do any HTTP um, API endpoints, it just sort of, in the, in the code, it runs through the exactly the same process, exactly the same protocol. So you could um, add your own ways of replicating, um, and as long as you follow the same protocol, it will 
will replicate. So that's all the slides that I've got prepared for this. Um, I'm happy to take any questions about setting this up and the processes. There's a mic down this end if you don't mind using it for the recordings. Well, uh, that's a uh, fantastic work, first of all. Thank you very Thank you. much. Um, I had a few questions. One was about um, conflict resolution. Okay. If, let's say, you know, some stuff is going on on one workspace and other stuff on another workspace, same UUID, uh, how can you moderate that? Okay, so um, currently it just picks one of the um, one of the revisions. So if you have two revisions with the same parent, they are conflicting revisions, and we track in, in multi-version module, we track all the conflicts, so we do know about them. We haven't yet got any sort of UI or anything to resolve those conflicts. Um, so it actually um, hashes the revision and picks whichever revision hash has the highest alphabetical hash. Um, so it's completely random. Um, and that, that's the way CouchDB does it. So we just followed exactly what they do. Um, we did have a Google Summer of Code project over the summer um, to resolve conflicts. So that's one thing we are actively working on. And what this Google Summer of Code uh, project gave us was a standard PHP library for merging arrays. So as I mentioned earlier, we've got a normalizer that puts all of the entities down into arrays. So we can get three arrays, the parent and the two child conflicting revisions, and we can do a three-way merge between those. So we're working on the conflict module um, that will allow us to do a full three-way merge between those and hopefully resolve any conflicts automatically. Um, another thing we're also working on in tandem of that is something that the uh, Acquia Lightning team are pretty keen to get in. Um, they're looking at putting all this stuff into Acquia Lightning, and they want ways to um, sort of flag up conflicts. So if there are conflicts introduced, it will sort of give you that barrier and say, stop, you can't replicate, there's conflicts, um, and uh, some sort of simple UI to resolve them, whether it's sort of pick which revision is your winning revision, or sort of manually edit the revision to create a, a child revision that resolves that conflict. Um, and so we're hoping that this conflict resolution will be very pluggable and, and flexible, and there'll be multiple different ways to resolve a conflict. Um, so no matter what your, your client or use case, there'll be sort of easy ways to resolve conflicts. Wow, awesome. <laughs> Uh, I also wanted to know about um, some of the differences between uh, the workbench moderation and content moderation, and you know, is this going to be like a? Are you still going to be developing uh, new features on workbench, and is there going to be some sort of migration path? If uh yeah, um, so personally, I'm not going to be working on any new features on workbench moderation. Um, I didn't do any of the work on Workbench moderation, so I think there are uh, team members from the Workbench moderation team who are still actively sort of uh, looking at bugs and, and issues there. Um, but I have um, started a 2.x branch of Workbench moderation where I'm looking at doing an upgrade path. Um, so if you're currently using 1.x of Workbench moderation in few months time, hopefully you'll be able to install the 2.x branch and it will magically just install content moderation, move everything over and disable workbench moderation and then you can remove it from your, from your site. Um, that's the plan anyway. There currently aren't um, any sort of big differences, so it should be a fairly straightforward um, upgrade path. The main difference with content moderation is you can now uninstall it because workbench moderation you can't uninstall. Um, and that's just the way the, the data is stored around the moderation state. Um, we've now got a, a new way of storing which moderation state belongs to which entity, um, which allows us to uninstall the, the module. Um, so, yeah, if you're looking to use this stuff in production now, I'd say probably go with workbench moderation and just wait it out for a bit until there's the upgrade path. Um, but if you've got a site that's going live in sort of 
six months or a year from now and you're starting development, then possibly look at a content moderation. Um, and by the time the site goes live, it should be all very stable enough. Awesome, thank you. And uh, I don't want to hog the mic anymore, but just one last question. Um, is Are there APIs in place to be able to say, um, deploy something from code? So if you're installing a module, how automatically pull from a place that you've set up um, rather than using the, the UI and how yep. how easy is that? Um, so yes, there is all the APIs in place to do that. The APIs are incredibly flexible um, and we've tried to make the UIs as sort of um, simple as we can. Um, so if you want to develop your own module, it is incredibly flexible. Um, we've got a a service which we call the, the replicator manager. Um, so you can call that replicator manager service and just pass it the information that it needs. So be the source and the target workspaces and it will just replicate between them. So if you've got a custom module and you could have a, an install hook on that that defines a source and a target workspace and does the replication. Um, so yeah, that's, that's definitely possible. And the replicator manager will also look at which replicators are in place. So the workspace module defines a replicator that replicates between workspaces on a single site. Relaxed defines the replicator that replicates between multi-sites. So it will look at which replicator applies in your use case, depending on the modules you've got. And it will do the replication depending on how you've got it set up. Great, thank you. Great. I have uh, two questions. Okay. Um, when you publish a uh, staging uh, workspace, does it replace the live uh, workspace? No, it replicates all of the content to live. So, um, as I was mentioning earlier, we use the revisions diff um, service that we've got to look at what's the difference between those workspaces and we only replicate the revisions that have changed or the revisions that have been added. Um, so it generates a, a, a JSON string and, and sends that over. Um, so it, it's, it doesn't um, sort of switch the workspaces, it just creates the revisions that it needs. But it, um, it updates it, because you, you press the you ch you change the moderation state, yeah, uh, and then it goes to the live workspace and changes that one. It goes uh, updates it. It doesn't change the moderation state on live. It just takes all of the revisions from stage oh. and puts them on the live workspace. Um, we've still got a bit of work to do to define what we do about moderation states. Um, for example when you change a workspace to a published moderation state, then what do we do with that moderation, what do we do with that workspace? Um, now it's published, um, do we delete it? Do we um, allow you to carry on editing on it? Um, do we change it back to another moderation state? Because once it's published, you can't publish it again because it's already published. Um, so in effect, you have to change it back to draft before you publish it again, but there's nothing enforcing that. So um, we probably need to look at some sort of sensible UI things that, that enforce that kind of stuff. A second question is um, currently, can we prevent the content editors from editing the things on the live stage? Can we, can we force them to only edit stage and then uh, do a deploy? Yes, um, we've got a lot of permissions in place um, to edit content um, depending on the workspace. Um, so they are slightly complicated, but we, you can set permissions like you can only edit content on stage and not on live. Um, you can only edit workspaces that you created. You can um, only edit sort of um, things apart from live. So even if someone else created the workspace, you can edit the content edit on live and there's a whole sort of host of um, permissions that are created every time you create a workspace. Um, so it's pretty granular in that. Thank you. Great. 
Any more questions there? Thanks for that, that's brilliant. Great. Uh, one big question, I guess, is when using Relaxed and replicating to a multi-site uh, separate instance, can you be selective about what content gets replicated to the remote site? Um, yes and no. Um, there's no UI for it at the moment, but the APIs are in place. Um, so when you do a replication, we've got something we call a replication task in the back end and you can provide that with a lot of information. And one of the things you can provide it is a, uh, a filter. And I believe filters are currently plugins, um, so you can even create your own filters. Um, I think we've got one at the moment that will um, replicate depending on sort of entity type or publish state or even sort of entity IDs. Um, so this is all a back-end thing at the moment. You can define your own replication settings as well that are just um, config entities. So again, there's no UI for it, but you can set your own um, YAML file that defines the replication settings, and that would um, pass through to the replication task and define all of this information. So yes, it's possible um, if you get down and dirty with the code. <laughs> Is there any plans for a UI where, for example, an editor could say, actually, we want, we need this content specifically? Yeah, yeah um, there are plans. Um, sure. It's just trying to get I'm time to do it. <laughs> yeah, um, the plan is eventually to have some sort of views-like um, interface where you can have filters and on that view and then just replicate everything that appears in that view. Um, so, you, as I said, you can filter it on the entity type or publish date or um, content type or any other sort of filters that you'd normally have on a view um, and then it would just deploy everything that appears in that, in that filtered list um, and this would use the same uh, replication task and replication settings that I mentioned it would just pass it from that view to the, to the task. So in theory currently you could write some of the tasks taking UIDs of specific node entities that yep. you knew you wanted to, and that would get them replicated. Exactly. I th I'm pretty sure that we're at the stage now that you should just need um, that config YAML file, um, and then you just define in there um, the entity IDs that you want to replicate. And then every time you replicate, you um, now I think on the workspace itself, you choose which replication settings config entity to use. And it will replicate depending on the settings in that. Um, so every time you replicate upstream, it will use those settings. Um, the, the, some sort of challenges we are having with the filters is how people are going to use this and the sort of mindset that you need to be in. Um, and one argument is that don't add anything to your workspace that you don't want replicated. Um, and a lot of people are saying to us that they want this filter replication, um, but then another group of people are saying that we'll just create a workspace and only add to that what you want to replicate, and if you have stuff that's not ready to replicate, add it to a different workspace. And that workspace, as I showed on that diagram earlier, it could be a child of your first workspace, um, and then you can deploy your first workspace up to live, and updates then the second workspace from the first one. You can change what the upstream is, so you can change that second workspace to then be an upstream of live. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's trying to get into the mindset of, of how you work. Um, so you've got the conflict of the groups that want full replication and selective replication. Exactly. But I think we can make it flexible enough that it can work with both use cases. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm personally in the mindset that you should only add to your workspace the stuff that you want replicated. Um, and I think I would suggest just to get in that mindset and get clients in that mindset of, of 
this way of working. Um, because that's kind of what you do with Git. If you're developing code, you wouldn't put things in your branch if it's not ready to, to go live, or you wouldn't um, merge a branch to your upstream branch um, selectively. Um, you would merge the whole branch. Um, so I think it's the way developers are probably used to doing things with code. Maybe not the way content editors are used to doing things with content. It's also less resource intensive if you're replicating only selective items, especially on your workspaces. Yes, yeah. If you are replicating a lot of entities at once, it, it can be pretty slow. Okay, thank you. All right, you. thanks. Great. Anything else? Um, I imagine that, that uh, this would make merging two entities a little bit more difficult. Is there anything in place for handling that? Um, so the question was about merging entities and um, so currently it's all down to the conflict stuff again um, if you merge two entities then you end up with two revisions that have got the same parent and it doesn't just have to be two revisions you could have 20 revisions that have the same parent and you could have a, a sort of a tree of 10 revisions underneath um, on the one side and 10 revisions underneath on the other side um, and we've got to resolve the conflict um, so again it's either a case of picking which is your winning conflict or trying to do a, a merge between them and I mean um, just to clarify this would be two entities with completely different new IDs or if say someone um, made a typo and they made an extra of something that already existed right um, if you've got two entities which have different UUIDs, then they are two entities, and they cannot, cannot be merged. Um, yeah, the, well, we've got no way in place of, or, and no plan to, to merge them. Um, yeah, I'm not sure of a good solution there, but I think it will be a, a case of manually just delete one of the entities and, and merge the changes back. But that would only come into place if someone created the entity separately. Um, if they if they stemmed from the same creation, then they'd always have the same UUID no matter where they're replicated. Um, okay. no, I mean, this this use case that I'm speaking about is uh, we have uh, software for laboratories and let's say chemicals. They, someone might have there's many different names for chemicals, and then sometimes we go in and clean stuff up, merge. Uh, actually synonymous and we already have a lot of data that's already associated with that. Okay. So I'm kind of wondering like it would, this suite in there would be more difficult than with or uh, Drupal because of the tree of revision data and all of that, right? Right. Um, yeah, I don't have a good, a good suggestion there unfortunately. Great. So I think that's, that's it. We're all good and um, yeah, if you do have any other questions afterwards then come and find me or tweet me or um, I'm happy to take any questions on this later on. Great, thank you.